Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you lot are doing well. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a Chelsea news video where I will be talking about three things. Armando Broja, the young Chelsea striker, absolutely tearing it up at youth level. The 18-year-old Albanian striker scored the, the winner against Millwall, of all people, in the FA Youth Cup, sending Chelsea through to the semi-final. I want to speculate about him next season. And could he go straight into the first team? Maybe. He looks like an absolute beast. And when strikers are at a premium, maybe it's better to just have more strikers. Also, Arsenal Football Club were eliminated from the UEFA Europa League yesterday. Their chances of qualifying for the Champions League now are very, very slim indeed. And I want to talk about how that affects Chelsea's transfer business. And of course, Chelsea are playing at Bournemouth this weekend. I want to talk about how they're kind of a bogey team for Chelsea Football Club. And I guess preview it a bit. Before we crack open this can of Chelsea goodness, I want to remind you guys to go check out OneFootball, my sponsor. Yes, indeed, OneFootball is the one stop place for all your football and news analysis stats fixtures results media news i think i've already said news but it does a lot of stuff clean concise easy to use and just user friendly basically so go check out one football i've put the link in the top of the description after you watch this video of course all right let's get on with it all right let's start with boy wonder armando broja he has 23 goal involvements and just 30 appearances of this season across different levels u18s under 23 development squad you know fa youth cup scoring that clutch winner etc he looks very very good indeed he's built very well for an 18 year old well 18 year olds are grown ups now aren't they so i don't know it's just because i'm getting old man do you know what i mean but he scores goals he looks very very good indeed of course chelsea have just recently given him his professional contract and he's very much in the eyes of chelsea coach frank lampard jody morris etc now, goals are a difficult thing to come by for Chelsea, apparently. Um, and I want to speculate what to do with this young kid. Man, young guy, whatever. Youngster. He's 18, he's a youngster. Do you send him on loan next season to a championship club? Usually, Chelsea's systemic ways would put him on loan at a championship club. Maybe even a League One club. But I want to speculate something different here. S bear with me. I think... In the summer, Chelsea could be getting rid of both Batshuayi and Giroud. Now, Giroud's a certainty, but with Batshuayi, maybe he'll hang about. I know he likes Chelsea, but for me, I think Chelsea should consider selling him. So that leaves us with just Tammy Abraham. Now, I know Chelsea are very interested and want to sign a striker, a good striker in the summer. But all the best Chelsea teams of history have had at least three strikers, sometimes even four, which is a bit mental. But three is a good number. You have two very good strikers that fight for the first team spot, i.e. Tammy Abraham and said new signing. And then usually you have a third choice that can start rotational games, come on when, say, you start in a two-striker system, one comes off, this kid gets a chance. This could be Brozier for me. He'll be 19 by then, he's used to scoring goals. Obviously, Chelsea really, really like the look of him. And why not be the third striker, be around the first team, still play under 23s games, obviously, from the first team, but come in, sit on the bench, be, be around the coach, the elite players, get a chance in the cup off a bench, or maybe even some starts. And if he does excel around the first team players, you know, who knows, he just gets promoted, 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 and it is superb business from Chelsea because, you know, they haven't spent like 70, well, if he's a rotational striker, they haven't spent like 40 million. Do you see what I mean? I'm just speculating. I think it could be a healthy, positive idea. Right, let's talk about the transfer window and what it means at the moment with Arsenal potentially not getting Champions League in terms of luring players to London to play in the Premier League. Of course, you've got Jose Mourinho at Tottenham Hotspur, but they've spent some money in January. I'm not sure they'll have big bucks to spend necessarily, bearing in mind the amount of money they pay Jose Mourinho. They've just gone into that stadium. They need to be sensible with their money. And unless they like flog Harry Kane or Son, I don't think they'll make you know loads of cash. And again, it's not a given that Tottenham qualify for the Champions League next season either. Chelsea could finish fourth, Man United could finish fifth and get the fifth Champions League spot if things stand as they currently do at Manchester City. And then, you know, Arsenal and Tottenham aren't in Europe or certainly aren't in the Champions League. So that's positive for Chelsea in terms of drawing players towards London and playing at the highest level. 
For example, Dario Upamecano, the RB Leipzig centre-back, who's very, very highly rated, who both Chelsea and Arsenal are currently looking at. Now, if it comes down to a bidding war or both clubs are happy to pay what Leipzig would want for the player and it comes down to the player choosing, he's going to look at both clubs and think, right, well, one's playing in Europe, and one's not playing in Europe. Now I know both clubs are interested but I can't pretend to have any inside knowledge to know what the player prefers but obviously on surface value if you're going to look at these two clubs one's got this one's got that generally he'll want the opportunity to play in the Champions League as he's currently doing so at the moment and playing well in the Champions League. So that's a huge positive for Chelsea. If Chelsea can indeed secure Champions League football themselves they will have not only the finances to spend more money on said players but also have the allure to these kind of players uh, over their you know, rival London clubs in Arsenal and you know potentially Tottenham. Righty ho then, let's talk about how Eddie Howe's Bournemouth dismal season for the Cherries. Kind of sad really. I do like Bournemouth, uh, how they played football, you know, low, it's very small stadium capacity. They've been up in the Premier League for a while now. Um, they've had a few ding-dongs. They gave like Liverpool a mental game. Didn't they beat Liverpool 5-4 or lose 5-4 to Liverpool? Anyway, you know, they've certainly made their presence known in the Premier League, but this season it's been incredibly hard. I think they had like one win in 10 or something, or maybe even 11, and that win this season was against Chelsea. 1-0 at Stamford Bridge. Dismal and dreadful scenes, of course, for the Blues. Now, Chelsea are playing Bournemouth again this weekend, away from home, obviously. Now, that game that Chelsea lost 1-0, they had complete domination. Concentration dropped, perhaps after getting frustrated after not being able to break the opposition down, and they conceded a goal on the break, and it's like, the, I think, I believe it happened like that. Certainly that's how Newcastle happened. <laughs> Jesus, this is depressing. Anyway, it's the same old story of not being able to break down the opposition. Now, Bournemouth is still indeed in a delicate position, um, which, I, you know, there's pressure on them. They want to stay in the Premier League. They'll know they've already beaten Chelsea at Stamford Bridge this season, so they'll probably be thinking, yeah, we can do it again. Chelsea have just come off a 3-0 humbling in the Champions League against Bayern Munich again at home. So this could go like one of two ways, if you ask me. Chelsea could uh, channel their anger and frustration and indeed ability against Bournemouth and punish them after getting frustrated against uh, Bayern Munich. Or it could go another way, which is more negative for Chelsea. Bournemouth will play without fear, surely. They know they've beaten Chelsea once before. They're not expected to win this game. It's not the kind of games that you target to stay up in the Premier League pre-season. So although they're under pressure generally to get results just to sort of maintain their Premier League status, I have a feeling there'll be much more pressure on Chelsea than there will be on Bournemouth, oddly. I do expect Frank Lampard to go back to a 4-3-3 formation. Um, it'll be very interesting and to be honest, kind of peculiar if he does go with the 3-4-3 again. Um, I wouldn't be totally against it because we've seen it work in the Premier League and if he believes the super width of the wingbacks will be something different in terms of breaking Bournemouth down, which we didn't have before, then fine. But I think 4-3-3 is probably the way to go. I mean, wouldn't it be absolutely lovely to see Ruben Loftus-Cheek come off the bench in this game, play some minutes? Like, it would be very strange to see him suddenly start a Premier League game. But we all want to see him on the pitch. He's such a big player for Chelsea. Even, you know, if he's bad, if he stinks the place up, it's a start. He's a huge talent and he needs to start rehabilitating his match minutes or his form via match minutes. So I'm gonna do a match prediction, a school prediction, excuse me, of this game. I don't think Chelsea are gonna keep a clean sheet. I don't. Chelsea rarely keep clean sheets and although they're better on the road this season than they have been at home, I still, I, don't, I just can't see it. I think Chelsea will play attacking direct football. I think they're really gonna go for it and be like, right, Let's show what we're about. We're not as good as Bayern Munich, of course. We had a really sobering reminder of that, but we are better than Bournemouth. Let's go do our thing here. So I think they'll score goals, but I also think they'll concede. I'm going to do a score prediction. Um, Chelsea <laughs> haven't scored that many goals recently, but I've got a feeling they'll come out and they'll do it um, this weekend. So I'm going to say 3-1 to the Blues. They will concede to Bournemouth, but I feel like the, you know, potentiality A will happen where they just basically rally after that Bayern defeat and hopefully it doesn't go the other more negative way. Anyway, I wanted to get your guys' thoughts and opinions on the stuff I've been talking about today in this video. 
What do you think of Broja? Do you think he should just go on a championship loan next season? Or do you think there's value in keeping him around the first team, developing with the first team players, and maybe having him as the third choice striker? As well, you know, they still go and play under 23's game, but he just trains with the first team, sits on the bench, maybe even gets like some bench minutes. Who knows, a start earlier in the cups? What do you think? Let me know about that. Do you think Chelsea have the edge over Arsenal and Tottenham in terms of attracting players this summer transfer window? Let me know. Do you, would you like Upper Meccano to come to Chelsea as a centre-back? Maybe let me know your priority targets in the comments section below. And if you've enjoyed this content today, guys, please do like the video because that helps me out a lot. And remember to subscribe to the channel if you are indeed new. And why not follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. I do live streams on Instagram to talk to you guys about Chelsea and football so come say hello follow me at football Yannick on Instagram that's it for me guys you lot enjoy the football and I will see you later you ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck I'ma get it how I'm living I'ma walk the walk outline my lines I rap through thought body bag the verse outline the chuck in my life seen trouble hustle on the double silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle yo chick like to guzzle bad boy stay in trouble i only love this paper sorry i don't i love me baby